This section is going to be dedicated completely to angles, but even more that of that, the three main topics really are going to be radians, cosine, and sine. Through this section, we're going to go ahead and get introduced to those concepts. We're going to create together an animating clock with the leverage of that knowledge that we built off of sine, cosine, and radians. We're going to create a lot more complex shapes using the capabilities that stand behind sine, cosine, and radians. And we're going to add a lot more vertices. You're going to understand it very deeply because by the end of this session, you'll know to create even stars with multiple points. Really cool stuff. We're also going to learn how to overlap shapes with other shapes to create more complex shapes. In the first lesson in this section, we're going to work with getting to know the sine, cosine, and radians. We're going to work with sine and cosine and understand them. We're going to find specific points in the circle using radians. And we're going to understand what radians are at all and why are we working with radians and not with just traditional angles that you're familiar with that are from 0 to 360. So let's jump right into that first lecture. Let's see what are sine and cosine in radians. We're going to take a small break from creating flags. And what I want to do is I'm going to go right into our do canvas. We're going to create together a clock. And the goal of this creation is to show you how to work with the sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to duplicate that creation of the kingdom of Bahrain and then we'll change it. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm sending into the original Bahrain sample a new canvas element. Beautiful. And the new one, we'll call it create time. And let's duplicate that method name, go all the way to the bottom where we had our create Bahrain. And I'm just going to create a new function here. And let me just copy all the basic stuff that we have from the beginning, from each sample that we have there. And I'm just going to make sure that we have your, our basic starting point. Beautiful. So let's start by now that we have our basic kind of configuration set up there. Let's go ahead and just create here. The real basics. What do we want in our very, very basics is literally we're going to clear our screen by just creating a nice little shape here. I'm going to go to my context. I'm going to fill style, set a fill style and just define it to a color. And I already just picked a random color here that I pre-configured originally. And I'm going to go ahead and fill a rectangle. Now, even before we check this out, I'm just going to go ahead and just set it to be the full width and height. We've done this many times. I want to revisit the arc, which we haven't seen for a while. We've seen it only in our first lecture and kind of get a better understanding of how the arc works. So I'm going to go into my context and I'm going to create a new arc. Now, even before that, I want to go ahead and change the fill color. So I'm going to change that fill style to be a different color. So our circle won't be the exact same color as our rectangle that has drawn our background. The next st stage is for our arc, we want to define for it a few coordinates. First of all, it's center point. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add another variable that we're going to be using throughout our application. One will be X, which will give us the center point of our application. And our next will be our Y, which will be our height divided by two, giving us the exact center point of our mimic flag that we were creating. Beautiful. So we're going to send in that X and Y as our first coordinates. The next coordinate that we want to send in is a radius and I'm going to go ahead and store that out so because we're going to use it throughout this lecture and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the radius will be a third of the height of our screen, making sure that it's taking most of our screen, but not all of it. All right, so we have our third property of our arc. The next two properties are the properties that define from what point in the angle will it start and to what point. And as we said previously, as a reminder, so we said we'll start from zero, but we said that a circle is represented by two pies. And in programming, many times we don't work with degrees directly like 360, but instead of that, we work with pies. So I'm going to set my math pie and that's going to give us our radian. So it's a radian, very similar to radius, but a radian is basically giving us that we have 360 here, although in, in our normal flow, but it's two pi r, the radius of our circumfere of our circle. Okay. Last but not least, I'm going to set it to false, although it doesn't really matter if it's our direction is counterclockwise or clockwise. It only matters when our value here is not a complete circle. In our case, again, we're creating a complete circle. And I'm going to go ahead and set my context to fill that item out. 
Now, if we go back into our browser, we should see that we should have here now, at this stage, a nice little flag that's kind of like correlates to our basic colors in our application. The next step that I really want to do is define actually the clock widgets time. But before we even do that, I want to take a focus on, let's see, how do we get to the different points of the circle? The points that are most easy and most obvious, let's go ahead and give that a try. So for the most obvious and most direct points, I'm going to go to my context and I'm going to set my stroke style and I'm going to go ahead and set it to be a green and I'm going to go ahead and just copy a green that I already pre-configured earlier and I'm going to set it a width. So let me give it a line width of let's say five and I'm going to go ahead and begin a new path. And once I began that new path, I'm going to go ahead step by step, starting from removing my pointer to what point? I want to move it to, well, the center point is the X, Y coordinate, but I don't want it to be in the center. What I really want it to be is I want it to be in my left line, let's say. So I'm going to subtract the R, the radius from our X position, and then I'm going to draw a line to a plus to that R. Now. That's going to give me the two points of the two edges of our circle. So if I go ahead here and save this and go back and click on refresh, you'll see that now we're going to have, oh, and I need to also make sure that I'm calling the stroke command. There we go. And let's go ahead and give it another shot. And here we go. We can see that we now drew a line that went exactly in the radius and the dots of my circle using that radius because I knew that center point. It was very easy for me to find those corners. Let's go ahead and also find the top corners, which literally will be the exact same logic, only this time we're going to apply it to our Y. So those were the easy parts to find. Contrary to that, if I wanted to find a point that is in a specific angle, I wouldn't just be able to do just regular plus minus signs to be able to figure out and configure a specific point in time. So now things get a little bit more complicated and the complication is that we really need to find dots that are in other spaces, not only these perfect edges, which are very easy for us to configure using a radius. To be able to do that, we're going to use basically some mathematics and the idea behind here is finding the sine and cosine. Now, because a circle is a perfect shape, it really doesn't matter if we set the sine for the X or the cosine for the Y, as long as we're putting in the same values on both ends. And when we put the same values on both ends, which we're going to see it in action momentarily, what's actually happening is that the math class is calculating for us a representation of a circle with a radius of one, its X, Y positions relative to its center. So it's basically assuming that there's a zero, zero coordinate and that our position, for example, if we're trying to find the spot here, what we really are trying to get in this triangle example, we're trying to get the X and the Y coordinates, or really what we're trying to get is the length of this item and the length of this item. Because if we get the length of this item, what are we getting? We're getting here the value of our width. And here we're gonna get the value of our height. Now, because we already have the radius, we have the angle because it's a perfect triangle. So what we could do is we could use the sine and cosine to get those information. So the sine itself is gonna give us the adjacent, which is basically the theoretical width. And the cosine is going to give us the value of our height, which in both cases is going to give us the information that we need combined to be able to figure out the exact point. Now, because we're working with a circle, it doesn't really matter too much if you put first sine or cosine. All that really matters is that you make sure that you offset the value because we really want to offset that zero will be on the top right here. So let's see what I mean. Let's go right into our application and I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of all this extra lines that we've put here. And what I want to do is I'm going to just create one line, but instead of creating this one line and actually defining it and I'm just going to go to the center point. And what I want to do is I want to draw a line and I'm going to use for that matter. I'm going to still use the X and Y, but I'm going to add to them that cosine and sine values. So let's start with the sine. So I'm going to go to the math that sign and I'm going to go ahead and send to it a radius of zero and then duplicate it by our R, which literally what we're saying here is I'm sending here a degree of zero degrees, but the ranges of degrees, as we said previously, when we were working with our arc, is that the range is not from zero to 360, but from zero to two pi. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and also do the exact same thing for our Y coordinate, 
And with our Y coordinate, I'm just going to go ahead here. Instead of using a sine, I'm going to use a cosine. Now, it really doesn't matter in this case, as I said before, if you use sine or you use cosine for each. The only thing that matters is when you take the 0, 0 coordinate, the 0, 0 basic point, and you find out that your 0, 0 in this case is here, then you're going to need to subtract 90 degrees to be able to get to your initial position. Or in this case, we would have to do is subtract math.pi. And by subtracting math.pi, then we would get to that initial position that we wanted to get to. So if I go ahead here and just subtract math pi and go ahead and click on refresh, then we'll have our starting position at our humanly visible zero, which will then be used for our clock. Now, on the contrary, if you use your cosine first and then you use the sine, then you're going to need to use a different algorithm, a different logic to figure out your starting point. And that's the only thing that would matter in a case of a perfect circle that you start off and put that offset. So in this case, if you started off with a cosine and a sine, then you would make sure that your offset is not gonna be a full math.pi, but a half of that math.pi. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get that offset into it, making sure that I'm gonna start off from the right position when I'm working with my clock. Now, in the next lecture, we'll actually start building our clock now that we get the basic logic of cosine and sine and continue working with cosine and sine to build an actual clock that's gonna be ticking away. So we'll see you in the next lecture when we do that. In this lesson, we really got introduced to the main topic of this section, which is radians, sine, and cosine.